and uh, thank you, Mr. Ramdas. Thank you for this opportunity. And the team uh, who have uh, participated in this webinar uh, through online link, I appreciate your efforts. Thank you for the uh, fantastic Sunday uh, evening, sacrificing your movie time to attend this webinar. I ensure that uh, this webinar will be of uh, interesting and it may have some uh, takeaway for you to your career. So I will put up the slides in such a way to make it uh, interesting. Okay. So uh, before getting into our webinar, I will just give you a brief introduction uh, where I am from. That is the company for which I am working for. That will give some uh, background. Okay. So I am working for a technical FMC. We are into the business of three segments. Uh, that is onshore, offshore, surface, and subsea. Onshore that is uh, related to the platforms which is uh, coming up in the sea. In that one we have the experience with the deep water and the shallow water platforms and the eventually floating uh, energy plant ships and on, on and on the onshore we have uh, experience in uh, mining metals energy petrochemicals refining and hydrocarbons and in the subsea that is the below the sea surface we have uh, uh, businesses into the upstream activities uh, like uh, surf sps and the flow lines and other things and on the surface side again we are into the upstream activities uh, supporting the village, uh, jetty loading homes, and all those things. This is the area we are uh, working on. And within this organization, I am into the process safety department. I'm looking after the process safety requirements for the uh, uh, mainly for the onshore and offshore uh, projects. So, this is the brief introduction for the company. So, uh, before going to the webinar, I am putting up uh, some of the keynotes. The first thing uh, this is a presentation where we are going to discuss about the Introduction. This is not the detailed presentation. My uh, intention here is to touch upon uh, what are all the process safety activities, typical activities and tools used in the typical oil and gas project. So it will give you the idea of what is what, and it won't give you uh, the detailed one. So given that we don't expect any calculation or exercise in this uh, webinar, so just relax and listen to the presentation and enjoy the presentation. And the third point, feel free to stop and ask questions. This is my uh, regular way of uh, addressing the questions, personal questions, if it's a face-to-face -face meeting. Unfortunately, since this is a webinar, so I need to change this condition into post your questions in the chat box. Hopefully, uh, Google or uh, somebody from IEI, they will have the track of all these uh, questions. And I will try to answer as much questions as possible at the end of the session, uh, given the time limitation. So this is a free note. And hopefully all your uh, speakers, uh, the mic are uh, muted. Uh, this is just to have that uh, simple conversation so that everybody can understand what we are discussing. So as you said, you have the uh, time to raise your questions in the chat box that can be addressed at the end of the session. Okay. So as the attendee of this webinar, what I can uh, get out of this webinar? So what is a process safety? You can get some understanding about the process safety. And most of the time, uh, the people from the field and uh, mainly from the other disciplines within the engineering organization, they will confuse process safety with the personal safety. So we will give some uh, differentiation how the process safety is different from the personal safety. And the third point, as the title says, we are going into that uh, concepts and tools which are applicable to the oil and gas projects. And uh, to get some uh, real-time experience, what I thought is, instead of explaining these tools, why don't we take up with the hypothetical project example? Let us example. Let us assume one project, and we will apply all those tools. Uh, what I am going to discuss in this uh, webinar into that project, and I will, and we will see how best uh, we are uh, getting into that understanding of those process safety tools. So this is the takeaway for you people attending uh, in this webinar. Hope you enjoy this session. Let's get into the webinar. So let's define what we are going to define. So as the title says, we are talking about the process safety. Uh, the, our first, first point is to define the process safety. So when you uh, just Google the, uh, in the, in the Google, if you enter this uh, process safety definition, I'm sure you can get thousands and thousands of definition. Okay. So this will differ from country to country, organization to organization. One of the foremost organizations on the process safety sector is Center for Chemical Process Safety, that is AICHE, which is situated in USA. 
So one of the definition from uh, CCPS is <clears throat> the protection of people and property from episodic and catastrophic incident that may result from unplanned or unexpected deviation in process conditions. So some of the key terms here is unexpected deviation from process conditions. So we are running the process for the fixed process conditions. If something deviating from that one, which may result in an episodic or catastrophic incidents, and which may result in a damage to the people and property. So those incidents which may result in a damage to the people and property, which is in the nature of episodic, episodic means a chain of reactions, chain of events, and catastrophic, that is a uh, sudden, uh, sudden uh, what is it, damage or other things. So those incidents are considered as a process safety incidents. This is uh, one way of defining the process safety. To add a little more clarity, I am bringing in one more definition from Energy Institute, that is a UK organization, which is working into the uh, HSC aspects of the energy industries. So I am getting that one. What it says, it is a little bit elaborates the CCPS definition. Process safety is a blend of engineering and management skills. So here the keyword is that is not only the engineering, the management also should have the responsibility to implement the engineering things. So it is an engineering and management skills focused on preventing catastrophic accidents and near misses, particularly structural collapse, explosions, fires, and toxic releases associated with the loss of containment of energy or dangerous substances, such as chemicals and petroleum products. So the key word here is, as you see here, the loss of containment of energy or dangerous substances. As you see here, we are, as a process safety, we are looking into the areas how to eliminate the loss of containment of dangerous substances. In the dangerous means it may be a flammable or toxic. As I say, it is a loss of containment of energy. For an example, if you have the high pressure air receiver, there you are, have the stored energy of high pressure energy. If something happens to that vessel, if there is an uh, what is it, the explosion happens to that uh, air receiver, what will be the damage? So this is not only to the flammable and toxic, this is also related to the loss of containment of energy. So as it says, it is a loss of containment of energy and dangerous substances. You can say that process safety cannot be applicable only to the oil and gas. You can apply these concepts and the tools to the any industry where you are handling a dangerous substance, which may be flammable or toxic, or you have the contained energy. For an example, automobile industry. Yes, process safety concepts are taken for them also because they have the pneumatic system, hydraulic system, and hopefully the steam, I don't know, and uh, hopefully the fuel gas for uh, heating their furnaces and other things. So these concepts not only applicable to the oil and gas, that can be applicable to any industry where you have this condition loss of content of energy or dangerous substances. Hope this gives some idea what is process safety. So now we look, move into the further, how we are differentiating process safety from the personal safety. I am giving you one example here. So this is one of the cartoon, which is showing the typical industrial activity. As you see in this cartoon, you can find a number of unsafe acts or hazards. For an example, uh, there is a chance for this uh, spanner feeding into the person's head. He is not wearing the helmet. Okay, this cycle is parked on the way of escape and he is standing on the handrails. So you can list out number of such safety, unsafe conditions or hazards. As you see here, this will be the full list of unsafe conditions. But can you fit these unsafe conditions into the definition of process safety? So what process safety says definition, what it says it is a loss of containment of energy or loss of containment of dangerous materials. By seeing this picture, we cannot see that all these safe, unsafe acts are related to process. I, I, I say that we cannot means we don't know what is material handled in this process section and <clears throat> what are the hazardous properties of those substances. Without knowing this, we cannot define whether these unsafe conditions are falling under the process, but definitely it is sure it is a personal safety. Given that, by seeing this picture, I can able to point a couple of acts which may fall under process safety. For an example, these two. Here you can see that there is a flange is missing here. If a fluid is introduced in this vessel, that may result in a loss of containment. So definitely, this is a process safety incident. 
and here if you see here this is an uh, what is it the plant it is an uh, hanging in a uh, kite so if this is falling this dropped object this object is dropping into a live lines which may result in loss of containment then i can say that this is a process safety activity so by seeing this example hopefully you can identify differentiate what is person safety and what is process safety as defined it is a loss of containment of energy or loss of containment of dangerous materials so this is a key takeaway hopefully hereafter you can able to clearly distinguish what is process safety and what is person safety with this background we are moving into application of process safety into oil and gas projects here i have given the typical life cycle of a oil and gas project so generally we will start with the concept so i have one product in mind so i want to develop a uh, plan to produce a pro produce a product so that is a concept stage the concept is what i need to do i need to fix up what is the capacity of my plant what is the uh, basic things very basic things what uh, area of land i require what is the key equipment from this things then the project moves with the moves into the basic engineering where some more details is added into the design and into the detailed design stage where everything is fixed up freezed the design free stage then it goes to construction then it goes to commissioning and after, after this commissioning it is added over to the owner who is the operator of this plant the operation is going on after some time the owner says he may need to introduce a new product or he may need to increase the capacity or he may need to address some issues design flaws which is happen in the basic engineering of the detailed design then he will go to the modification phase where this improvement to the uh, plant or improvement to the asset or improvement to the product uh, what is it uh, the product portfolios the new products all those things are happening so this is an uh, cycle activity operation and modification so for every plant there is a phase that need to be decommissioned because we cannot foresee the demand for the product for long generally what we do in our land industry we will design for the plant for uh, 20 to 50 years this is the general uh, philosophy what we are on so that means that we design the product plant which can withstand up to 50 years after that they need to go for the improvement or they need to decommission go for the new so this is how the typical cycle goes on in oil and gas we call this whole thing as a engineering procurement construction epc so these first three cases concept design basic design detail design that is called engineering and under the construction we go for procurement construction so the engineering contractor typical work is up to this basis concept basic design detail design construction then the rest of the phases will be handled by the owner operator of the particular so given that so with the title process safety aspects in oil and gas projects as i am from the engineering company the whole webinar will be concentrating on these three steps of the epc project that is the concept stage basic design stage and the detail design stage okay so what are all the process safety aspects typically applicable for the oil and gas projects we will start with the concept the very first thing what we uh, implement for the project at the concept stage is isd review that is entrance safety design review we are going to discuss further in the coming slides and the next will be the as it again bit which will be typically taken care in the basic design stage and the asop and lopa this is in something and uh, what is it uh, follow up it can be taken in the basic engineering as well as in the detail design stage and you are in generally at the detail design stage and these four things are uh, typical uh, review procedures so what i'm saying is review procedures we are assessing how safe the plant what we are designing okay and apart from this review procedures we have fire and gas detection which is an uh, what is it added uh, protection layers we are going to discuss about these things and there's also a serial classification active fire protection passive fire protection engineering control of noise safety layers so this will give the overview what are all the safety concepts applied in the oil and gas project so we are going to discuss all these key elements in the subsequent slides okay so as i told earlier we are going to discuss 
these key elements with the help of a hypothetical project. I am not going to explain to you as a theory. We are going to apply this concept in a sample project. Okay. So are you ready for uh, handle the project, typical uh, sample project? Let's see. Okay. So we have the client who is having the plan and he is uh, having the idea of putting up a diesel storage system. Design a facility to store diesel fuel in bulk and distribute the same to various end users. Uh, end users means where this diesel is going to be used. A typical example may be the diesel generator, boiler, instrument, etc. within the plant. So this is the requirement. Let us assume this is a typical line in this project and this is a client requirement and how we are going to safer design, safer uh, plan by the application of the process safety concepts, what we are uh, discussing in the previous slide. Okay, so once this requirement came into the any APC company, the first person getting into the job is a process engineer. So you need to speak to the client, what is this requirement, assess the requirement, and get up with the very basic things. Okay, so now we are getting entering into the concept phase. So what we have, client is asking for the storage. So typically we need to have the storage tank for the diesel, and it is going to be distributed to the multiple end users. So end users may be distributed across the plot plan at the different location. So we should have some uh, source to generate a pressure so that we can deliver the diesel into the end users. So obviously we need to have the inlet to the diesel. That is and where we are getting the diesel. And as I told, we need to have the distribution pump and the pipe network to distribute the thing to the different users. So this is a concept stage. The process engineer as a person who is the first person entering into the project, he need to uh, get a consultation with the client to get fixed upon what is the demand for this diesel based on the end user requirement. And as I told earlier, based on the location of the end users, what is the my source pressure criteria? So these are the two key pro two key components that need to be uh, fixed up in the uh, concept stage as well as the key equipments required. In this case, a diesel storage tank and a distribution. Okay, process engineer done his job. Then he is looking into me, process safety engineer. Hey, Ilan, uh, this is my uh, concept design. Uh, can you uh, look into uh, look into that uh, design from the process safety perspective? Yeah, we can. We can do it. We have the incorrect safety design review. Let's go for the review. So, what is the incorrect safety? A process has incorrect safety if it has a low level of danger, even if something goes wrong. Okay. This is the definition. Uh, there is one uh, very good approval. If you don't have, uh, if you uh, don't have anything in your pipeline, there is nothing going to leak. That means that if your residual risk itself is very less or negligible, then there is no nothing uh, harm going to happen if something is going to leak. Okay, this is the concept of internal safety. So what we are doing here, we have the keywords like uh, what is given here in uh, red, there is a minimization, substitution, moderate, and simplify. And this is a team activity where uh, the team from uh, client side as well as from the getting contractor side need to assemble and they need to do the brainstorming based on this key concepts. That is a minimization for an example. What minimum volume, volume of the tank? See, this diesel tank can be sized to store the diesel for a one day consumption or one week consumption or one month consumption or one year consumption. There is no limit for the, the capacity of the tank. But the risk for each case is different. For the one day, for an example, it is an uh, 100 liters means for one week, it will be 700 liters. So if there is a leak happens in the both cases, the consequence will be different. For the first case, at the worst case, we may be uh, having the loss of containers of 100 liters of diesel. But in the second case, we have the loss of containment of 700 liters of diesel. So we need to agree on what minimum size of diesel tank can be we can have to satisfy the end client requirements. Okay. Substitution. Why diesel? Why not natural gas? So we, we need to branch show why diesel is required. See, we, the end user is a generator, a boiler, incinerator. Why not we have the natural gas? What is the advantage of natural gas having the diesel? For an example, if it is a diesel, it, we need to have the storage tank. And if there is a leak happens, it will result in a pool formation in the ground. If it is a natural gas, 
we most probably may not need a storage tank. It can be a piped system, which can be piped directly to the end users with the regulation or uh, flow measurement or the control system in between. If there is a leak happens, it will be dispersed in the air for the minor leak, I'm saying. Okay. So is there any advantage? So this is the way we need to brainstorm to substitute and moderate. At what temperature and pressure? Is it possible to reduce the pressure? Because if you have the high pressure means you have the high consequence. See, uh, assume the leak which is happening from the pipeline, which is maintained with one bar, and the same pipeline if it is maintained with 10 bar, what will be the worst case? The 10 bar, definitely, because the source pressure is high. Accordingly, your uh, loss of containment will be high and the consequence effects will be high. So, how best we can optimize the temperature pressure? Simplify. Again, why we need this tank and the pump? Why don't we use as a distributed pipeline from the source itself? Or, can I, or, or, or are we able to eliminate the storage tank or the pump? Is mm -hmm. it possible? Because unwantedly we are storing the flammable material, not the flammable, combustible material in the storage tank, in the bulk, bulk storage tank. Are, you, are we able to eliminate this? Thing? So this is a way a typical ISD workshop will progress. This may be looking simple for the diesel tank. Let us say the recent example of ISAP. If we apply these things, there can be number of improvements can be done for this uh, visa incident. For an example, minimization. From the news, you may understand that the tank is around some uh, 2,000 or 3,000 liters capacity. Why such a huge tank is prepared? This huge tank resulted in the prolonged release of styrene and substitution. Why the styrene is prepared? Is there any alternative there? Moderate. What is the temperature and pressure? What is the operating temperature and pressure of the storage tank? Simplify. Why, why we need that uh, intermediate storage tank? Whether we can have the pipe, this pipe supply of styrene from the nearby, this is depending upon our source where the styrene is coming from. So, this is a way, this is this ISD, the ingrown safety design concepts can be implemented in projects. As I told, as I, as I uh, recall again, this is a concept which can be applied to any industry, not only to the oil and gas. Again, if you take the automobile industry, the same concept can be applied to the automobile industry. So likewise, for any industry can be applied. Okay, good. We have the IST workshop completed and our process is happy. Now the project is moving into the basic design and our uh, process engineer added on uh, some more uh, details to that uh, project. So this is what we have at the basic design. You can see the difference. Instead of a simple box now, it looks like you see the difference? It is a cold roof storage tank. Okay. And we have the inlet and our processing here added a overflow line. And he had added a pipe pump, piping, which is leading into the pump and to the end users. And he had added a pressure indicator. So this isn't just an example. You don't take it as a, as a rule. This is all the data basically. And this is not like that. This is depending on the process and the project what you're handling. I'm just bringing in. The concept stage drawing what we had. Now you can see the difference how the project is progressed in terms of design. In the concept, we have only the inlet line and the rectangle box with the pump. Now we had the number of improvements to the design. Now we have decided the tank type will be the simple bone roof tank, and we have added a number of uh, lines and attachments. So this is how the project is developed from the concept stage to the basic engineering. Now, perfect. Now, again, process engineer comes to me and asks me what improvement you can do from the process safety perspective. Yes, you can do acid and NBIT. Okay, let's do. What is acid? The purpose of acid, the purpose of acid study is to identify the hazards that are present in the current design and the potential consequences if the hazards are realized. So, Again, we need to approach this ASEED as a keyword concept. It is a guide word review. We have the set of guide words from the portion standards as well as the operating company's procedures. Accordingly, we need to again do the brainstorming. But when it comes back to the guide words, what we use in ASEED and the ISD, it is totally different. Okay. ISD concept is to eliminate the assault itself, here to manage the assault. Like the way we need to have these guide words. And when it comes to NPIT, it is similar to the ASEED, but however, the guide words are 
more and more related to the environmental hazards, the impact to the environment. Okay. For our case, let do you as it for a simple uh, one guide word. So this is a typical guide words what we use for as it. I am just given the four. And there is a uh, list of guide words will be there. You can refer any uh, client document or uh, ISO standards that you can get the total list of uh, as it guide words. Let us talk with the process fluid release. Okay. So this is a typical uh, as it worksheet. The guide word what we are talking is process fluid releases release. So what may cause this fluid release? One brainstorming point is a rupture of the tank due to corrosion that may lead to loss of containment of diesel. Okay, what is the consequence? Diesel tank rupture will result in a loss of containment of diesel, and upon ignition it will result in a fire accident. So the loss of containment of diesel that won't immediately result in a fire incident. It should have your ignition source so that it will get into the fire. So what is safeguard we have? To prevent this uh, consequence, prevent this cause and consequence. At present, based on our basic design, we don't have any safeguards. So, what is recommended? The cause, we can say that the material, whatever selected, I can say that the existing safeguard, I can say that the material of construction of the tank, which will be uh, suitably selected, and we have uh, given the corrosion elements and above the design uh, thickness, what we arrived. So that is one of the safeguards, existing safeguard we can see out here. And the recommendation to prevent the consequence, we can provide the bund around the tank. So current design, we don't have the bund. So that if the vessel, the tank collapse, the diesel will spread across the platform until the content is exhausted in the tank. But if we have the bund around the tank, means we are containing the release within the bund. It is not spreading beyond the bund. Okay. So this is for one case, one guide word. Likewise, we need to brainstorm for the entire guide words as applicable for this project in agreement. The guide words, what is agreed with the client. So accordingly, we need to improve the design. So the same concept applicable for NBIT. I have not uh, listed any uh, worksheet for the example for the NBIT, but the concept is the same. The guide word may be different. For an example, emission to environment, what is emission? If we have the overflow line, it is open all the time. There is a diesel emission will be happening to the environment. So that may be the consequence. And what is the safeguard we have? What is the recommendation? Like the way we need to brainstorm for assaults for the people property as well as assaults for the environment. This is how we are progressing with it as a bit. Okay. Perfect. Now we enter into the detailed design stage. As you see here, our uh, process engineer front, we had uh, further uh, added on the engineering details to our system. As you see here, he had included the wall with tag numbers, tag numbers for the items. And you can see here, he had included one uh, level switch here, high alarm, which is giving the LAH level high alarm. And he had included the temperature uh, transmitter, level temperature transmitter to measure the temperature inside the tag. And he had included the level transmitter, the level indicator to measure the level. And he had included the level switch low along, and as well as he had included the tag numbers here. You can see how this uh, project is uh, progressed from the basic design, the detailed design here. See the basic design. We don't have the instrument, that is not the actual case. Uh, I'm just giving you for the example to see how the from design is progressing. So, the main concept is from the basic design to detailed design. The level of engineering, the detail of engineering will be increased. That is the whole concept. So, perfect. We have the detailed design. Now, what safety, process safety improvements I can do it to the detailed design? Good. We have the ASOP. Let's do the ASOP for this process plan at the detailed design stage. What is ASOP? ASOP is called as ASOP and operability study. There is a two keyword, keywords here ASOP and operability. That is, this review not only looking into the assault, but also it will look into the operability issues. For an example, if I have the strainer on the suction line of the pump, how I can do the maintenance for the strainer? For doing the maintenance, what provisions you have given in the design? So all those operability issues also discussed in this. That is the main difference between the ASIC and assault. Okay, in the ASIC, we look into the uh, assault uh, perspective. We are not looking more into the operability perspective. In ASOP, we will look both in ASOP as a sorry, ASOP as well as in ASOP. So, what is ASOP? 
a systematic comprehensive analysis of plan design to identify the safety gaps which may lead to either safety or operability problem during the study the asop team will use a guide word again it is a guide word but here the guide word is more and more uh, narrow this is here the guide word is a combination of deviation and parameter we are going to see that what is the deviation parameter to identify the design flaws or the cause consequence errors so what is the guide word for us up how it is getting here this is the deviation so what are all the deviation we can consider and this is the parameters okay so guide word is a combination of deviation and parameter for an example no flow the combination is a no flow that is a guide word likewise less flow is another guide word more flow reverse flow the second parameter the second uh, parameter is the temperature again if you do the combination no temperature it, it won't be because there is there won't be any no temperature it will be either uh, less temperature or more temperature likewise pressure less pressure or more pressure likewise level less level or more level so we have the set of guide words now based on the combination of deviation and parameter let's do a sample uh, as of for the system what we are doing for the let's say uh, we can select this uh, more pressure as a guide word okay so this is my as of worksheet for the more pressure for the guide word more pressure so what may cause the more pressure i am i am now i am studying the tank as a node before before doing this azop study we need to uh, split the whole uh, process clean into the nodes so that the azop study will be streamlined because doing the azop for the entire plan may be too difficult our case it is a simple one in the plan and the case of tank and out the outgoing tank but think about the whole process plan to be too difficult so we need to break the whole process plan into the nodes for each node we need to apply this guide so for an example in our case i am taking the diesel tank as a node and i am applying the guide word of more pressure into the node so what may cause more pressure within the tank for an example while pumping diesel into the tank that is the in incoming line to the diesel is kept open diesel is getting into the diesel tank so what happened automatically the vapor space within the diesel tank which is getting reduced by rise of liquid level which will result in the increase in the pressure within the tank so more pressure the cost will be pumping in diesel will result in the more pressure so what is the consequence if i don't have any safeguards let's see the consequence diesel tank may rupture if tank pressure exceed design pressure so tank is designed for some design pressure that means that uh, the tank will stand up to that pressure if inside the operating pressure exceeding that pressure there is a chance for this tank will get into rupture and which may result in loss of container The rupture will result in loss of containment of diesel upon ignition it will result in fire incident looking into our drawing existing safeguards none uh, uh, it is not the none actually i can say that we have an overflow line that may relieve the pressure but we don't know whether it is sized for uh, this case as a recommendation what i'm saying is provide a relief valve to the storage tank so likewise we need to go through the entire guide words and we need to brainstorm what is the cause what is the consequence what safeguards we have if we don't have the adequate safeguards we can recommend the additional safeguards so this is how asop will proceed so we have done the asop and we have improved the process safety of the plant design and further we have low power which is called the layer of protection okay what it is so this is the concept of uh, protecting the plant by means of a uh, onion uh, model okay but the heart of the model is uh, your uh, process design the very first protection layer is your basic basic design for an example in our case we are designing the plant to store it uh, store the diesel and distribute the diesel so what basic design i have followed i have uh, selected the correct material of construction to be compatible with the diesel and i have uh, uh, get it to the correct design pressure 
to power the mini over the scenario and i have selected the distribution pump to minimize the leaks from the seal i have selected the double mechanical seal distribution pump so these are all the basic design which i have incorporated to prevent any accidents so about the basic design what is the next level of uh, protection that is the basic controls uh, recall that uh, pnd what uh, i showed in the detail design stage we have uh, implemented the temperature transmitters level transmitters level switches and all this these are all the basic controls which will uh, keep the process within the design function and next level there is a critical alarms and manual intervention if something goes wrong this automatic control system fails the basic control fails what will be the next level who we have the alarm system so there is a high level alarm corona wire which will give the operator intervention which will be alerting the operator so likewise we have the low level alarm uh, which will give the protection for the pump dry run so this is the next level of protection above that we have safety instrument systems what is a safety instrument system this is again this is again a automated system but it is independent of the basic controls the basic controls in our case is we have the level indicator transmitter within the tank which will control the level okay this is the basic control above that we can implement the independent control loop that is called safety instrument system if something small function happens within the bpc system this sis will come into the picture it will shut down the system so that is called the safety instrument system and above that we have the next protection layer that is a physical protection by means of relief devices to avoid any over pressurization of the tank and the next level physical protection again there is a containment system as you recall uh, during our uh, azi we have implemented the type there is a containment system and the plant emergency response and above the all if something happens the loss of containment happen which may result in the fire or the dispersion of the thing what is the emergency response we have within the plant boundaries that is called plant emergency system if the consequence is going beyond the plant boundary there is a community emergency response system now you can correlate this uh, low power concepts into the again into the vaisa incident okay they may have the basic design that is a stamp design temperature and the relief holes and the basic controls if you uh, have the followed up the and new articles you can you can understand that they have to maintain this styrene below 20 degrees celsius so that is a basic control they may have some controls and the safety instrument system i don't know what they had and the physical protection yes they had the relief walls the entire styrene is relieved through this relief wall and the physical containment uh, from the new uh, footages i understand that they have the tight system available within the plant and plant emergency response i don't know what system they had and the community response in that incident actually happened as a converted into community response because the styrene the relieved gas which traveled beyond the plant boundary it, it reached the community so i foresee there is some lack of community response system the entire uh, the, the, the surrounding population they are not fully aware of uh, the system what they handle and what is the emergency response system available within the plant so in lopa we are studying all these requirements okay for an example in my diesel tank i apply all these layers what layers we have what i am lacking if i need to implement the safety integrity system then the concept of seal will come into picture safety integrity level okay that is again it is a separate concept which will take uh, more than one day to discuss i am not touching up these things but this is the concept of lopa okay with this i am moving on so we have uh, discussed all these things up to this containment okay now we are into plant emergency response if something happens with all this uh, protection measures what we, what we are doing before uh, to that one we need to assess what effect it may result okay so that's where we are getting into the consequence analysis in our case for an example with all this protection measures let a leak happens the diesel happens then further what it may result in okay it may result in a dispersion that means diesel which is leaked out of the system which may vaporize and it will result in a flammable gas cloud and cool fire 
if the leak diesel ignited it may result in a fuel fire jet fire if the diesel leak is happening as a jet instead of a fuel for an example if the diesel diesel leak is happening on the discharge side of the circulation pump which is at high pressure then it will be releasing as a jet so if it is ignited it will result in a jet fire and explosion if the uh, released diesel vapor cloud if it is getting ignited as a cloud it is ignited what will be the explosion in the dispersion we have both uh, flammability as well as a toxicity uh, for an example again to the vaisak incident the styrene which is uh, flammable as well as toxic uh, fortunately there is no fire incident happened on, on, on the uh, accident it is only the toxic cloud so we need to assess all these things so how we are going to assess we have the sophisticated software for doing this job so one of the software is the past so the typical output how it will be looking this is the way it is looking up so this is the consequence for dispersion for an example i have the leak at the origin of zero zero at the elevation of some one meter i can say if the leak is happening i am getting the lfl up to this point that means that in the downwind i am getting around some uh, 9.5 meter is my lfl cloud and this is my cloud width okay so like the same way you can generate for toxicity so for for an example this case is for hydrogen so hydrogen there is no toxicity is applicable it is only the flammability so i have generated for the lfl value of 4000 ppm so 40000 ppm okay likewise we can generate for toxic chemicals okay the next will be the fuel fire for an example i have simulated for uh, some other uh, liquid uh, uh flammable material if that is ignited what will be my uh, radiation level from the fuel so that will be given as a result in this graph and likewise for the jet fire what will be my radiation distances likewise for explosion what will be my over pressure so based on this over pressure we need to uh what is it locate our uh, buildings and other vulnerable objects outside this um, explosion over pressure rating so this consequent analysis will help you to plan your plant emergency system as well as community emergency response systems for an example if your consequent says this uh, distance for this uh, dispersion fuel fire jet fire explosion which is all this distances are within my uh, plant boundary means that means that it is the any effect it is not traveling beyond the plant boundary so we need to develop the plant emergency response plan supporting if it is going beyond the boundary we need to look into the community emergency responses okay with this one we are moving to the next concept so what is this concept before that i am just showing one picture if i ask somebody to define what it is the obvious answer is a basket full of apple okay so is there any other definition can be uh, somebody may case uh, somebody may say that a basket full of green and red apple okay this is how this picture can be defined okay now move on to the next picture i have this picture and i am asking the same person can you define this picture this time the definition may be something more uh, concrete the person can say that a box containing uh, 12 apples out of 12 apples four are uh, green and balance eight are red can you see the difference between the definition of these two pictures the first one it is saying qualitative we can say basket full of apples we cannot define more than that but in second case we are defining in terms of numbers a box of a box of apple full apples a box of full apples which contains out of 12 four is green and eight is red you see the difference see this is where we are getting into the quantitative analysis by saying quantitative now we are getting into numerics up to this point from the start of my presentation i have speaking a generic term asar generic term dispersion generic term fire but i don't give it in terms of numbers for an example if it is fire happens how much distance you can see the radiation of so and so radiation or how much distance the lfl will happen and again 
if a buyer act comes, is it affecting the people? If it is affecting the people, how many people are there? So those things will be dealt with quantitative risk analysis, analysis or assessment. Okay. So what is this QRA? QRA provides a numerical measure of the risk a facility or operation poses to the public, the site workers, or on site and or off site equipment. So, by definition, risk is a function of frequency and consequence. So, again, consequence, as we discussed in the previous slide, consequence again is a function of property of material handling. For an example, is a flammable or toxic. If it's a flammable, what's the splash point? Is it easily ignitable or less ignitable? Likewise, leak hole size. What is the hole size where the leak is happening? And isolated section volume. For an example, if we assume the leak from the diesel storage tank, what is the capacity of the diesel storage tank? Uh, if you recall, at the end, at the starting of the webinar, I mentioned that if the tank is 100 liters capacity, the consequence will be less. If it is a 1000 liter capacity, there is isolated section volume is high, the consequence will be severe. So again, consequence is a function of all these things. This I have listed two things. Likewise, a number of things are there. Likewise. Frequency is a function of leak frequency. For an example, again, the diesel tank leakage, if leak is happening means how frequent it can happen. What are all the leak sources? Okay, all those things will be assessed in the leak frequency. Once the leak is happened, it is not getting ignited for all time. Okay, we should have some probability of ignition. Okay, it may ignite or may not ignite, depending upon number of factors. Likewise, probability of human presence on time of given time. Even if it is ignited, is it affecting the person or not? It is depending upon whether the person is standing on the time of the event the fire is happening or he is stationed somewhere away. Likewise, number of factors need to be studied to get into the risk. Again, this QRA is a complex subject which itself requires a detailed discussion. I am not getting into that part. So I am just giving you what is the concept behind the QRA during the QRA. Again, as I told, it is done by the softwares by inputting the consequence, what we get it from the previous slide, and uh, getting the frequency calculated and fed into the software. So, this is how the QRA will progress. Okay, with all these things, we have some sort of defined design which can ready for construction. You can see that uh, two red color walls. What is this? Okay, I did the QRA for this, for this system. And the QR study given some recommendation. For my uh, diesel tank, if the leak happens, there is the consequence which is uh, which is uh, which is not acceptable. So I need to do some modification to my design to contain the leak. So what I did is I have included the ESD wall, okay, emergency shutdown wall, which can be activated during the what is the leak scenario, so that. For an example, let us assume there is a leak happening on downstream of this line. If you don't have this wall, it will go on continue because these walls are manual walls. Okay. Remember the Jaipur incident, I was here Jaipur incident, the tank farm incident. There they had the walls, in, even though it is a uh, motorized wall, but that need to be activated on site. It cannot be activated remote from the control room. A person need to go into the site and we need to push the button. Unfortunately, uh, before uh, the site, uh, site activation is uh, happened, the diesel whatever uh, released from the tank is formed a flammable gas cloud so that no person cannot enter into the tank. So what happened ultimately, the entire tank content is leaked out, which resulted in a massive fire incident, uh, or a costly lesson learned for uh, India. So what I have included, I have included the ESD wall here based on my QRA recommendation. So we have somehow a defined and uh, safe system to go for construction. As you see here, from the detailed design, what is the improvement we have done? We have included the ESD walls based on the QRA results. And this uh, sealed rating of the ESD wall that will be coming from the low cost study. I cannot go on detail into that section. As I told, it is a separate uh, topic to discuss. And as you see here, uh, we have included one uh, improvement here to mobile tank. So without pump to load into some mobile tank, this is an improvement from the detailed state. So 
and uh, as you see here uh, as part of this asop recommendation we have uh, implemented the relief system here okay which is not in the detailed design stage okay so this is how the project is getting mature from the concept to the construction incorporating process safety aspects tools routines okay but this is all the review tools apart from that is up to this point we are concentrating how we can avoid the loss of consequence or how we can avoid the what is it as as events but there is some more layers available to minimize the consequence with all this protection measures something happened some loss of containment happened so how i can minimize the consequence effects that's what we are going to discuss further the first thing is fire and gas reduction system so whenever there is a leak happens the very first protection layer in place is fire and gas reduction system if it is a volatile component or is a gas we have the gas detectors which will give the alarm to the operator alert the operator or if it is converted into the fire then we have the fire detectors okay now uh, let us implement these systems into our design so before that we have uh, i have listed down uh, what are all the detectors available here for the fire we have the heat and flame detectors smoke detectors heat detectors flame detector it is working on the principle of optics by uh, seeing the flame and these two smoke and uh, heat detectors that is based on the product of the fire that is the product of the fire is a smoke if there is a smoke there is if there is a smoke means there is a fire is there likewise if you measure a heat means there is a fire is there so these two detectors are based on the product of fire and this is the fire itself and likewise for gas reduction we have flammable gas reduction toxic gas reduction and industrial gas reduction or any specific gas reduction we can do so now how do we implement this in our system we have this uh, ready for construction plan now i am going to implement the detectors so first i have implemented flame detectors i have placed two flame detectors to cover this Tank and I have placed two detectors for this pump. Why? This is a possible leak source, the mechanical seal and other things. This is a possible leak source where we have an overflow line. So that's why I have placed my detectors around these two possible leak sources. Likewise, I am placing my gas detectors again. I am putting it on the pump, which is a possible gas, possible diesel leak source. There is a mechanical seal of the pump. So this is this looks so simple for this system, but as a for a whole process whole process plan it will be a laborious job and it requires expertise and skills for placing these detectors okay and what next i have as a serial well classification what it is the leak is happened and uh, fng detector is failed to act or it is uh, failed to detect somehow so there is a next consequence maybe the flammable cloud may get into the fire so this is a typical fire triangle everybody knows about this hopefully so for any fire we need oxygen fuel and ignition source as you know that fire is an uh, reaction between the fuel and oxygen there is an oxidation reaction you can say that so to initiate that reaction we need to have the ignition source or energy so what we are going to do with this hazardous area classification for any process we cannot uh, eliminate this uh, fuel and oxygen for an example in our case diesel which is a combustible material which is a fuel our uh, whole purpose of the plant is to handle this diesel so we cannot eliminate the diesel in our system likewise oxygen oxygen is everywhere in the atmosphere we cannot eliminate oxygen so the only possible thing is we need to control the ignition sources so how this ignition source is uh, related to the azar seria classification yes as we look into the definition What is hazardous area classification? A hazardous area is defined as a three-dimensional space in which flammable atmosphere may be expected to present. So, what we are going to do? We are going to define uh, what may be the flammable atmosphere around my system, based on the material what I handle, or based on the flash point or the physical properties of the material what I handle, and uh, based on the operating temperature pressure. So, I am defining the flammable three dimensional flammable atmosphere around my system so that if i define that one then i need to control the ignition sources within that cloud three dimensional cloud so what flammable uh, ignition source i can foresee any open flame 
for an example i cannot uh, place my diesel pan near the uh, uh, fire heater let us say furnace because there is a open flame is there it is an ignition source likewise i cannot uh, place a normal uh, electrical items into that uh, flammable flame in the normal electrical items are thrown or generating spark so i need to go for specialized electrical items so we are going to first define the flame of atmosphere then we are controlling the ignitable sources which is going to be present within that flame of atmosphere how i can define that atmosphere flame of atmosphere yes we have the process centers and again it is a separate uh, subject for discussion so i'm just giving up the introduction of that one so what we are going to do we are going to zone classify my system so what zone classification zone 0 is corresponds to what of us are seria in which a flammable atmosphere is continuously present that is 24 by 7 there is a flammable atmosphere flammable atmosphere means we have the fuel as well as the oxygen that is a flammable atmosphere if that is there i am defining that as a zone 0 likewise zone 1 that is likely that is not uh, 24 by 7 uh, in a day sometime it is available sometime it is not there likewise zone 2 it is like it is not likely to occur during the normal operation however it is existing okay with this let us uh, do the zone classification for our system i am just uh, copy paste from the code so this is my diesel tank this is my diesel liquid level inside the tank above the diesel tank it is a diesel vapor as well as air because the diesel tank is open to atmosphere you remember the overflow line and the relief valves which are all open to atmosphere okay so when i uh, pump out the diesel the liquid level will go down on that time the air outside the air will get into the tank when i pump back the diesel the level will go increase okay on the time this space will have air as well as the diesel vapor that is an 24 by 7 we have the flammable atmosphere so inside the tank we should have zone zero uh, remember the relief valve so relief valve will activate whenever there is a over pressure so whenever there is activating it is releasing the diesel vapor in that case we don't have the diesel vapor 24 by 7 but it is percent likely so what i am doing i am classifying this area as a zone 1 and zone 2 what it is it is not likely available during the normal operation for an example if there is a leak happens in the level gauge then the diesel is leaking then it will be a cloud so around the tank i am classifying as zone 2 once this is done then electrical people will get in the picture they will shut the electrical apparatus according to the classified source okay so we have uh, completed the sort of serial classification one improvement on minimizing the consequences what next we have active fire protection yes what it is active fire protection active fire protection system is defined as those systems wherein an action must be executed either manually or automatically before the system will operate so we have the uh, next protection layer that is a water fire protection system if above the all if there is a fire happen how i can minimize the damage happening due to the fire where this active fire protection system come into the picture so it describes the fire fighting systems and the equipment to be put in place during the fire incident such system includes delivery system water monitors hydrants mobile fire monitors both systems so this is the typical fire water system start with the fire water tank which is sized in such a way to fight a fire for the defined duration and it is having the jacket pump and the fire water pump and we have the delivery system into a loop network where we have the monitors deluge hydrants okay so this entire system is pressurized with the jacket pump running so there will be a set point below the set point it will automatically start a fire water pump if the jacket pump is not sufficient to maintain the pressure the fire water pump will automatically stop in and will stop supplying the fire water okay so in this system we have this monitor and hydrants which is again need to be activated manually the person need to go and he need to connect the hose to the hydrant then he need to direct the water hose into the fire 
Likewise, for a monitor, a person need to go into the tree. You need to move the monitor nozzle in such a way to find the fire. And in deluge, again, we have the manual activation as well as automatic activation. In deluge is something like uh, pouring your water uh, in an immediate effect all around the equipment. Again, uh, this system, uh, the study and the design of this system, that is an entirely uh, uh, one day or uh, multiple days uh, we need to have to get into the work. But this is the basic, very basic. The thing is, we have the active firefighting system as a protection layer. So, with this active fire protection system, how it will be my uh, how will be my uh, diesel tank will look like? As you see here, we have our diesel tank here. Unfortunately, this picture is not having the diesel pump, but it is giving the details of the fire protection system what we design. As you see here, these are all the deluge nozzles which is activated from this control panel, and we have the monitor located here and we have the foam porous this is one of the another one uh, fire cutting equipment which will uh, deliver the foam into the dike area for an example if there is leak happens here there is a diesel pool is here if i apply the foam over the pool i am eliminating the contact of fuel with oxygen because in between we have the foam layer like the way we are uh, uh, extinguishing the fire likewise we have the foam porous for this tank if this tank is a floating roof tank this example is a floating roof tank so that we have a foam porous on the above it. So this is how the typical uh, system will look like when we have the complete uh, design for this uh, fire water system. Okay, with this one, our next protection layer is a passive fire protection. What we are going to do in the passive fire protection, what is the difference between passive and active fire protection? Passive fire proofing is for the protection against the adverse thermal effects of fire for a limited period and limited degree of exposure. It is a protective measure to improve the capacity of equipment and its support structure to maintain its structural integrity. See, any fire will result in the uh, reduction of structural ability of the metal components. If the metal component is exposed to the fire, it will eventually lose its strength as the temperature increases. What we are going to do here, we are applying a protective coating over the metal surface so that it will be, uh, what is it, uh, the heat input to the metal structure is limited. So how it looks, just like uh, this is the actual side picture, uh, theoretically like that, we have this I-beam, which is a metal load-bearing component. If this I-beam fails, it may result in uh, what is it? Additional, additional loss of containment. If this IPM is supporting any uh, flammable uh, material containing vessels or pipe, so I am applying the PFP coating above this IPM so that if there is a fire happening in the nearby equipment, this IPM cannot lose its its strength. So this is how uh, practically it will be looks like the passive fire protection coating. Fireproofing applied to vessels, structures, buildings, walls, and pipe supports. Okay, where we have this uh, uh, flammable material containing systems. The length of time during which an element needs to maintain its integrity depends on local circumstances. The type of coating, that selection is based on how much time I need to protect this member, okay, how much heat gradient it needs to withstand, all the factors of the defining factors on selecting this PFP coating material. Okay, with this, I'm uh, moving on to the next on layer, engineering control of noise. Generally, noise is considered, uh, people consider this as a uh, occupational hazard. Yes, it is an occupational hazard. However, prevention of this noise, we need to take an engineering control. That cannot be uh, controlled by the occupational safety measures. We need to take it during the engineering stages. So that's why it is considered as part of the process safety activity in the engineering industry, engineering sector. So what is the limitation? The normal limit is 90 dB and 115 dB for the occasional, for an example, if we have the PSV, which is releasing once in a while, on that time, we can exceed this 90 dB normal limit. That too, we cannot to exceed 115 dB. So these noise levels we need to access during the design stage. For an example, in our case, we have the pump, which may be resulting in the noise, and we need to ensure that the diesel distribution from noise level is within this 90 dB. If it is exceeding, what I can do, we need to go with the enclosures, acoustic enclosures, so that the noise cannot be, outside noise will be limited to 90 dB. So that is the another one production layer. That is, again, it is not on the, exactly on the process safety. It is an occupational safety, however, considered as part of the process safety also. Okay, 
with all these things we have a number of tools and activities we have discussed so how we can be delivered to the downstream uh, my fellow engineers or to the clients by means of safety reviews so as a serial classification layout where i will show all my clouds fng detector layout where i will show my location of the detectors and the type of detectors active fire protection which shows the location of my fire fighting system location of my monitors hydrants likewise passive fire protection layout that will show what members are passive fire protected and noise zone layout we should use the which is high noise area which is a low noise area in high noise area what protection further from occupational aspects we need to do escape route layout if there is a fire incident happens what will be my escape route safety equipment layout like the portable extinguisher like i'm not cover those things portable extinguisher and other things safety sign layout these are all the what is it uh, minimum uh, layouts things i need to do as process this project okay with these things uh, we are almost at the end what kind of software as a process of engineer we are using pipenet so this is the software we use for fire water system design hydraulic drainage system past safety and this is for the consequence analysis qrd canta this is for noise study ph pro this is for as it nv does of low power any uh, review process we can use this ph pro to record it is it is something like excel kind of uh, software but it is a uh, sophisticated one so with this i am uh, finishing my webinar uh, we are into 7:40 10 minutes uh, i have uh, uh, taken extra now i am giving back to gopal uh, gopal uh, i am ready for uh, answering any questions yes sir i think uh, thank you so much i think uh, for your uh, informative and wonderful session i think so many safety concepts we have uh, seen here and protective methods also uh, and um, also like uh, the uh, basic it's an introduction so uh, we need to learn more so definitely i think uh, today our uh, fellow engineers and uh, participants would have enjoyed much and we have uh, uh, quite number of uh, pouring questions was there i think uh, there are some uh, chemical engineers also more chemical is there i think i will uh, just uh, read out few of the questions okay okay this is from uh, vel murugan how far carrying out a qra in concept stage would uh, help me uh, help me to design a safer facility especially for the given scope of work Uh, okay. Just to contemplate the use of QRA in various phase of project life cycle. Okay, uh, doing QRA in concept stage. As you see, he he see here. When 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 I am looking for the QRA, I am looking for the detail. For an example, I need to calculate the leak frequency. Leak frequency means I need to look into how the P and D. Uh, what are all the elements I have in my piping system? For an example, if I if I have the leak. that was the if i have the wall for an example wall is a one of the leak source for an example stem of the wall it is prone for leak okay so to calculate my leak frequency i need to have the entire detail of my system that will be only available to me at the detailing design stage okay as you uh, see into the presentation slides at the concept stage we have only the key elements key key equipments we don't have the detail so if i do the qra on the concept stage that may not be giving you the correct results okay that may be over conservative okay so in terms of leak frequency or the consequences everything is not fixed up. so if we do the qra on detailed design stage we have all this design trees so that we can do the but as a experienced engineer we may need to include all this uh, foreseen recommendation in the design itself so for an example the esd board what i shown that may be included in my detail design before going to qra itself because i know as a process engineer that may come into the later stage instead of waiting for that one i will include the detail design itself in that case the qra will be just a verification aspect okay so this is to answer your first question on the second question on the run plan yes we can do the qra for the run plan in fact uh, there is some indian regulations there to revisit the qra or update the qra in the uh, what is it uh, even uh, yeah for an example in the vaisak plant also there is an uh, speculation stating that their qra is not updated to foresee that to reflect the current scenario of what we have in the plant so that is one of the in the news uh, article i have read that they have not updated their QRA. 
so any run plan they need to periodically do the reas of validation as of as well as the revalidation e hope this answers your question yes uh, we have another uh, question from mr srinivas k so a part of lopa does we take credit for contaminant the contaminant that is bud or coming will still have a potential chance for pool fire okay uh in the lopa the layers protection layers what you define that need to be agreed in agreement with your end client okay uh see all these process concepts that are all uh, developed in the last 10 years i can say so okay, maybe after this uh, gopal is going to be can be yes i think that's right so all are under development nothing is become as a standard rule for an example if you are designing a relief system so we have the aba or asci standard you need to follow is the code you need to follow likewise we don't have such a system for process okay for us up the guide words what guide words i will select what guide words i can uh, leave it that is the agreement between you and your client in client likewise for lopa whether i can take it take it credit for content for system or not you need to agree with your client as a process engineer i can say that i can take some credit what is the fire proof material uh, used for fire proofing yes there is a number of options available concrete based one impermeable paints based one all those things epoxy based ones see the the, the basic concept the concrete based it will be a uh, bulk material applied to the mainly to the structures okay uh, but in case of epoxy or other paints what will be, it will be thin in the nature but whenever there is a fire embedded on this paints it will be charged it will create a thick um, coating of a charred carbon to further prevent the heat penetration into the member so you can just google it you can find the number of materials based on the vendors will it not increase the load on the structures yes that also taken care that is that is the uh, what is it um, uh, the structural engineers need to take care they will be looking for the process of in here to give this what is your my thickness of this uh, uh, pfp coating accordingly they need to define the structural uh, design the structural thank you thank you sir <clears throat> yes sir so we have one question uh, from uh, uh, sk swami so in the visac plant what as is leak and toxic gas detection alarm is installed or not that we don't know because uh, we are the outside community we don't know what is there inside the plant uh, but what i understand is tyrant is a monomer okay which need to be cooled at below to 20 degrees celsius and it is a tendency to self polymer in fact they are doing the polystyrene as a product that means styrene polymerization okay that is a process that process in that case what i foresee is they have stored the styrene in the storage tank something uh, went wrong the temperature storage temperature gone beyond that uh, auto polymerization temperature which may result in a runaway reaction and that runaway reaction result in a heat liberation that may heat up the balanced styrene and the pressure inside the tank went high which result in the psc open opening of uh, relief wall and release of stain that is what my understanding but we need to wait for these uh, any study reports coming out from the government side yes sir uh, we have one more from pondram so he said as you said vapor cloud explosion for diesel is possible again i have for the example purpose i have used the diesel diesel from the flash point perspective it is falling under the combustible that means that it is forming a gas cloud but getting ignited is very rare chances chances so you cannot say that it is possible for diesel okay but it is possible for any gas species okay so that's all i think questions from uh, chat box is over so okay. we may request okay. any audience one or two i think if they wanted to directly they can ask they can ask before asking they can introduce themselves and they can ask uh mr ilango good evening uh, pondram here mm -hmm. good evening pondram uh, yeah i am a process engineer and a proto say i am your ex colleague also <laughs> <laughs> actually uh, yeah I, i you answered my query uh, the thing is uh, what i understand is for diesel there won't be any vapor explosion right yes okay okay fine, fine see where for explosion there is number of factors need to be considered for an example if i place my diesel tank or any gaseous thing in a open flame uh, plant okay in that case it is an uh, flashback fire okay 
AI explosion need to happen, you should have the confined one. For an example, let us assume the gas cloud in an open space. And I am igniting the gas cloud. And there will be some effect. Let us assume the same gas cloud inside a room. And I am igniting this. The consequence should be different for the two cases. For the first case, you don't get any explosion over pressure because it is on the open space. Okay, That ignition will result in a flash fire. But inside the room, it will result in a over pressure because the combustion product, that is the CO2, which is coming out of this burning of this gas cloud, will be having the higher volume, which will result in expansion. And it is contained by the room. You can see the pressure, which will be acting on the room volume. So, in the second case, you have the over pressure, and in the first case, you don't have over pressure. So, it is not simply like that. If you have the gas cloud, you will have the explosion. No, not if you have the gas cloud, you will have the containment. And if you have the what is the ignition source, location of ignition source, all those factors will need to be taken care of. Mr. Sri Lanka, where are you from Abu Dhabi? Yes. Yeah, technical safety concepts, uh, part of PSM, very well explained, in simple and effective manner. Thank you. Thanks for the session. Actually, I never never attended the PSM session in the simplest way uh, possible. This will explain. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, Ilangovan, uh, this is Soma. Can you hear me? Good evening, sir. Soma. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, sir. I'm uh, I'm Soma. I'm uh, ex colleague of Ilangovan working with Technic Babu Dhabi. Uh, thank you, Ilangovan. It's a wonderful session. Uh, only you, one uh, question. It is a uh, you yeah, I mean covered about the fera it must be an important i feel in my okay. opinion okay. if you are a fire explosion and a risk assessment yes sir uh, what i thought is i have mentioned i have given the title as a consequence analysis uh, that counts to okay. be referred in a number of different ways for an example okay. fire and explosion analysis or the building risk analysis but ultimately we are looking into the consequence and how the consequence is impacting the people and the property Right, so the right. title may be different. Yes, they agree. Good, good. Okay. Okay, Thanks. Very good. Yeah. Is there any final question, sir? I think uh, before we close up. Maybe one more. We can take one more if yeah. anybody is interested. Uh, Elango. Uh, Mr. Elango. Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, this is again on ramp. Uh, since okay. you discussed about that vapor cloud, I, I just uh, curious to know some kind of hydrogen explosion, uh, hydrogen cloud explosion and all happened. Uh, I, I just experienced about that. Could you please uh, t tell me uh, how to avoid if anything, if any hydrogen cloud, for example, any other cloud also, maybe hydrogen cloud is a very uh, a dangerous one since it is uh, it has no color and no uh, odor. Uh, yes. Any kind of vapor explosion, how to handle it as a process? Okay. See, uh, if you want this kind of level of level of uh, what is it detailing, one way is to ensure your ventilation. Okay. So if you are where you are placing your plant, let us assume there is a leak happening, and you need to input this uh, plant model into the CFD. And based on the prevailing wind velocity, if there is a leak happens, whether it will be dispersed below to the LFL value or there is a chance for getting the LFL flow. Okay, that thing you need to do with the CFD analysis, and you can ensure that yes, even if the leak happens, you don't result in ignition. Even if the ignition uh, ignition happens, the explosion over pressure will be not damaging any of the equipment. We can we can do it, but all these things in the safety, everything is uh, effort and money and the detailing. Okay. If you want to go to the CFD analysis, you need to have all these details and the time and the resources. Uh, Mr. Uh, hello, this is... Go yes, no problem. Go ahead. Uh, um, Mr. Uh, I'm Murli Dhanan. I uh, yes, worked as a chemical in uh, SR engineering. Yes, Murli Dhanan. We have done projects so expansion of uh, refinery the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my question is uh, the flare systems. Yes. Flare systems uh, uh, is not uh, discussed. Yes, I agree. Uh, that uh, that is again. Uh, this is an one hour session. I have given with the one hour. I have taken uh, one hour twenty one hour ten minutes. I think. So this is. Uh, I, I cannot accommodate everything into this session. Okay. I thought this is part of this consequence analysis. Yes, you can assess the flare also. 
again this is the flar radiation analysis part of the consider again also there also we are going to assess the what is the radiation level and it is uh, impacting any people or plant yes i agree that should be appeared as a separate slide maybe in the next presentation i will do but it's again depending upon the time for which i am allowed uh, yeah we yeah, understand thank you sir. thank you yes sir. i think uh, we had a very good session with the various uh, participants who have given their uh, uh, question and uh, questionnaire also so definitely i think uh, we can plan one more session in advance mode with the approval of a chairman the phase two manner so maybe yeah, after yeah, yeah. Uh, this next month also we will try to do that because the audience are so much of curious and uh, i think uh, as our uh, uh, speaker also requested i think uh, some more non iea members also is there in the forum so for them i think uh, the benefits of iea and uh, the how the iea the functions of iea if our chairman can explain so we can able to bring them also under the cloud of iea i hope uh, so i just give to our chairman so with the concluding remarks so that we can close so please thank you gokul it's a wonderful session by uh, elangavan sir thank you once again elangavan sir thank you sir it's a great session uh, as far as iia it's a 100 years old organization is right 1920 it started right now that uh, 20 years 100 years celebration we are going on so uh, all over uh, the india is 124 uh, centers here the main headquarters is uh, calcutta that uh, tamil nadu state center located in chennai and under the tamil nadu state center uh, we have 16 local centers are there and then uh, different membership was is there first one is uh, amie that is associate member institution of engineers those who are passed out the uh, engineer into uh, graduate and uh, is eligible to get ami and chartered engineer certificate and then uh, professional engineers also is there and then once five years experience you can uh, eligible to get the professional engineers international professional engineers also in uh, we are doing for that international professional engineers we are conducting the exams based on the exam result that they are uh, awarding that uh, international professional engineers the next uh, membership is a member institution of engineers those who are completed uh, 30 years and then uh, 10 years 9 years experience in the field so after degree 9 years experience in the field they are eligible to mie and then next one is a fellow institution of engineers fie fis who are completed uh, after uh, engineering 20 years and then age is completed 40 years and then one more criteria the minimum salary should be monthly more than 2 lakh rupees then uh, if it is a company owner and uh, like that more than uh, 24 lakhs uh, turnover a company is a uh, uh, proprietary company they are eligible to get uh, fie and if it is a government employees more than sc that is operating engineer it's eligible to fie these are all the membership and other uh, facilities over there regularly the institution of engineers is conducting this this type of uh, uh, program regularly and then uh, one day program and then uh, two day seminars even uh, international conference also we are conducting apart from that the student membership also is available every colleges we are having that uh, student memberships all the students first year itself they can join as a student membership uh, <clears throat> after four years they can able to join as a they able to get a ami degree also with this uh, today i think the session is wonderful bala mr bala dr bala is there i think uh, okay gokul uh, just to do the yeah so yes sir thank you so much i think uh, for your uh, iea uh, opening uh, remarks uh, definitely i think uh, we had a very good participants i think uh, starts with uh, even it was uh, ended with 100 more participants i think so many people would have not be able to join it we have already said them also they can also join in the youtube so definitely it is a wonderful session in the one sunday minute, one minute gogol yes, right sir. now actually we are uh, bought uh, webex in uh, more than uh, that is 100 1000 uh, participants uh, license maybe in the next session uh, will uh, go go to the uh, done by the webex and uh, the participants is a thousand participants chairman oh, sir more number of participants yes yes 
Mr. Gogol, this speaker uh, covered the topic very nicely. I'm Karpu Sambi from Trichy. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. From the Thank beginning, you. Thank I you, was sir. watching him. He has nicely covered from the design to design to the final project, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. The points except that flare system he covered everything. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you sir. Thank you. So, thank you so much, sir, for your uh, presence on Sunday evening. Also, to participants and our uh, members of IEA. So, I think uh, they had a wonderful session of two hours. So, definitely, I think we will uh, have more sessions uh, for the coming days also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm signing out. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you, Langon. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.